You heard me say that philosophia, the origin of the word philosophy, it's a platonic coinage. He made that shit up. It's love of wisdom. Lacan, however, you've heard me say, is interested more in truth. And here we have a sense of now what truth is. The love of truth he's talking about is a love of incompletion. It is a love of weakness. It is a love of castration. It is a love of impotence. This is the truth that is loved by the analyst. This is the truth that is loved by the theorist. And the theorist, in this sense, is not a philosopher. Professors love wisdom. Psychoanalysts love truth. What does it mean exactly, then, to love truth? I present this as a furtherance of our review here, in anticipation of what is about to happen in the final chapter of Seminar 17. To love truth, you've heard me say, is to love the part of it that can be said. Here's that half saying. But here's the hook, man. To love truth is also to love the other half, the part of it that cannot be said completely, for the reason that beyond this half, there is simply nothing to say. This is straight out of the book. It's page 51 again. Here, beyond this half saying, Lacan claims, discourse is abolished. Here, I would like to suggest, beyond the half saying, beyond the statement of limitation, incompletion, and inconsistency that the hysteric forces masters and professors alike to admit, here we can pass into weakness. Recall what Lacan says. The love of truth is the love of weakness. The love of what truth's half saying hide, namely castration. Which brings us to page 52, a really terrific page to have in mind as we're about to jump forward into the 180s. This love of weakness, that is the love of castration, according to Lacan on page 52, recall this famous passage. And if it's not famous, it damn well ought to be. This is in fact the essence of love. The love of weakness as castration, as impotence, is the very essence of what Lacan means by love. Recall this passage on page 52. It is upon this that everything that has to do with truth is constructed. That there is a love of weakness is no doubt the essence of love. As I have said, love is giving what one doesn't have, namely what might make good this original weakness. And just to be clear, what again is this original weakness? Go to the paragraph above. What is the love of truth, Lacan asked toward the top of 52. And then by the end of that paragraph, he's ready to cough it up. The love of truth is the love of this weakness whose veil we have lifted. It's the love of what truth hides, what is called castration. This is why truth as a half saying is so damn important. Because it unconceals the fact that there is something there beyond what can be said at the limit of knowledge. Beyond the statement of the impossible is the impossible itself. Qua castration. And when you love truth, you love both of its sides. You love the parts of it that can be stated. Here are my limits. This is where I can go no further. And this is the outer limit of where we have found ourselves in this particular discourse formation. But what you also love is your own ignorance of what lies beyond that statement of limits. That is what the love of truth is for Lacan. You've heard me say that this is connected to the discourse of the analyst. That is precisely what is at stake throughout Seminar 17. What I want to add is that it's typically understood that Seminar 17 is a seminar about knowledge. That is not false, 
but it is only part of what is at stake in Seminar 17. Seminar 17 isn't simply about knowledge. It's about love. Seminar 17 is Lacan's seminar on love. Because it's the seminar that shows us that at the outer limits, really a statement of inner limits, an extimate limit that carries us to something beyond, beyond which there is nothing, Lacan says. This is what's up with knowledge. Knowledge not as a closed, complete entity, but as a process that, if done well, as a radical form of scientific inquiry, not as epistemology, but as a hysterical, in all senses now, pursuit of the truth. Not in service to knowledge, but in service to a knowledge process that yields truth, and truth as a half-saying, and also a half-saying that shows us the point beyond which we can say nothing at all, where discourse, Lacan says, is abolished. The task of the analyst is to inaugurate this love of weakness, this love of castration, this love of impotence, this love of truth, as a statement of where you have to stop speaking and also as an index of the silence of discourse that you then encounter. The silence that we know as a classic Lacanian real. The task of the analyst is to awaken the love of all of this in the analyzant. And what I think this means, again, is that the analyst is skilled at repurposing his or her knowledge of how the unconscious works such that it can become a love of truth among analyzants. Where the analyst's knowledge was, hear me now, the analyzant's love of truth, weakness, and of love itself must become. 